Welcome to the Midweek Show. I'm Pastor Darren for many, PD for a few, DNIB for a very select few, and it is my honor to be hosting the Midweek Show. Coming at you once a month to try to be able to connect in a disconnected world, a way for us to hopefully entertain you, encourage you, inspire you with some great words and and we're got, I mean, I, I think we got a great show this month. I really do. Coming at you with some of the classics, cultural cuisine, Dew Jr. We're going to be inspired in the midweek moment. We've got some great generosity with Pastor James. It is going to be a great show. But before we get into any of that, I can't wait to be able to come at you with the definitive top four list. Oh man, if you are looking for any of the top things of all time, this is the place to come. The top four list and this month we are talking about the top four thanksgiving desserts of all time let's go we just got done celebrating thanksgiving and it's all about the dessert for me i mean i love all of the food i love turkey i love the stuffing and mashed potatoes i love all of that kind of stuff but man it's all about desserts it's all about getting to the main course and that's what we're talking about the top four thanksgiving desserts of all time. Here it is, your honorable mention. Man, I love the honorable mention because it's not something that belongs in the top, but it needs to be mentioned. And so this month, the honorable mention goes to whipped cream. Whipped cream? Is it whipped cream? Whipped, whipped cream. You got to whip the cream to get to the whipped cream, right? Whatever it is, whatever. The whipped cream, I love whipped cream, but it's not, it's not going to be the top dessert but it needs to be mentioned because it is the top topping of desserts. I mean, nobody has whipped cream by themselves. Yeah, yeah, we do. We do have whipped cream by themselves. I was just thinking like nobody goes in into the refrigerator and grabs a can and squirts something in the mouth. We absolutely do that. I mean, when you're a kid, not when you're an adult. Let's go. Come on. Yeah, of course adults are going to go and sneak a little bit in there. At least guys are. Like, any guy that I know is going to do that. I love some whipped cream. Love even a Miracle Whip, man. I'll even take my a little finger of Miracle Whip out of there. But I will tell you what changed my life. My wife, oh my goodness. I love my wife so much. She made homemade whipped cream. I thought Miracle Whip was good. And then I had homemade whipped cream. Let's go, somebody. The honorable mention absolutely belongs to the top topping of all time, and that is whipped cream. All right, let's get to the top four list. Coming in at number four is pecan pie. Pecan pie, pecan pie, however you wanna be able to say it. That is the number four pie on my list. And I think the reason why it comes in at number four is because I think of this as as an adult, an older person, dessert. Like, you don't see kids being like, oh, what's a pecan pie? Like, like that doesn't usually happen. And I think maybe, I mean, uh, it's just because it looks a little weird. Like it, it, you just see all of the nuts on top of it and, and you're not sure what's on the inside of it. And so it just doesn't have that like, ooh, I want to have that look to it until you get older. And then you realize, where has this been my entire life? I love pecan pie, but it's coming in at number four because it's just, it's missing that personal nostalgia to me. I never had it when I was a kid, so it doesn't like, it doesn't, well, it doesn't have nostalgia. So that's the reason is coming in at number four is pecan pie. Number three, ooh, this is when, this is when controversy is happening. Number three is bread pudding. Oh my goodness, I can feel some tension already that's happening because some of you are like, yeah, bread pudding. Some of you are like, are you out of your mind? No, I'm not. I love bread pudding. In fact, I think it's like, I think it's the most underrated of Thanksgiving desserts. Hold on, check that. I think it's the most underrated dessert of all time. I love bread pudding. I think it's underrated though because ah, bad bread pudding, that's that's just going to ruin your day. Nobody wants to have bad bread pudding and it can get really bad. But if they do it right, ooh, man, oh, that 
the spices, the caramel, all of that together. And then, man, when it's fresh out of the oven, some warm bread pudding will make your day. I love a great bread pudding coming in at number three. Like I said, that was some controversy because some of you are like, you're out of your mind. Some of you are just stopped watching the midweek show right now because of that. Love bread pudding. All right, here we go. Number two on the top four Thanksgiving desserts of all time is apple pie. Oh, is there, I mean, is there a more American holiday than Thanksgiving? Yeah, probably 4th of July. That's a, that's for another time. Though. All right, uh, but there's like it is American. Thanksgiving is an American holiday. We just sit around eating food, watching football, uh, celebrating each other. Come on, that's a great holiday right there. Love Thanksgiving. And is there anything more American than apple pie? I love my mom. I love America. I love apple pie. Apple pie a la mode. Ooh, how great is apple pie a la mode? You got a warm apple pie out of the oven, then you put on the cold ice cream. It's warm, it's cold, it's sweet, it's tart, it's apple pie a la mode. And you know, I just I just thought of this, like I talk about how American it is, but my favorite apple pie is actually Dutch apple pie. Like I love that crumble on top. That crumble, oh my goodness, that just makes it so much better. Love apple pie, a la mode, coming in at number two. Here we go. The top, the top, number one Thanksgiving dessert of all time. It has to be pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie. Man, I love new stuff. I love being it be to be progressive. I love new things that are coming out all the time. But I also like tradition. And there's nothing more traditional than pumpkin pie at Thanksgiving. Now, I know some of you might be able to, to throw in some sweet potato pie. I don't know, they're pretty similar to me when it comes to that. All I know is I just wanna be able to have whatever is inside of that pumpkin or sweet potato and all of the spices that go along with it. Ah, oh, nice little crust that's going in there. I love pumpkin pie. And then here's what comes, this is what's so important. This is when our honorable mention comes in and saves the day. Whipped cream on top of that pumpkin pie. Oh my goodness gracious. There's nothing better in my opinion. I absolutely love whipped cream on top of my pumpkin pie. It just makes my Thanksgiving. And you know, I, I gotta be honest too. Like when it comes to the whipped cream, I'm not a guy who just feels like you need to have a nice little, a nice little swirl of whipped cream on top of there. You know what, you can make it look nice and fancy when it's all put together. But once I get my slice, I want a big heaping spoonful of whipped cream on top of it. I cover every single corner of my slice. In fact, let it spill over the edges of that. It makes me feel like a little kid again. I absolutely love whipped cream covering all over my pumpkin pie, it makes the day, it makes the meal. I am happy afterwards. Number one on the list, number one Thanksgiving dessert of all time has to be pumpkin pie. Come on, somebody. I would love to be able to hear your list as well. Tell me where I was right. Tell me where I was wrong. Tell us what your top four list as well. I would love to be able to hear that. That is my top four Thanksgiving dessert of all time. Speaking of Thanksgiving dessert, let's see what they're whipping up in this month's cultural cuisine. Welcome to Cultural Cuisine, the part of the midweek show where we celebrate all cultures. Now, last month we had a little bit of American culture. We're gonna have some more American culture. Oh we are getting ready to celebrate Thanksgiving with some pie. Oh. Enjoy. Okay. Shepherd's pie? First stuff is your traditional apple pie. Oh. Okay. Yum. Wow. Dig in, huh? Dig in. 
All right, let me serve you. Thank you. Oh. Oh. That was my fault. All right, let's Cheers. give it a go. Cheers. Mmm. Mm -hmm. It's apple pie. All American. Yeah. A little tart. Mm hmm Just right. Are you a pie person? I am. You are. I'm not. I love pies. Now for a little twist on something a little bit different. This is a turkey pot pie. Oh. Wow. Give it a try. Okay. Here we go. Love me some turkey pot pie. That looks very Can interesting. Turkey pot pie? Yeah. Or chicken. Turkey. The frozen kind, though. I can't get it. Anymore. It has uh, cranberry in it, too. Oh, that's why it's sweet. And there's stuffing in there. That's good. Okay, I don't like mixing sweet and salty. That's just weird. I like it. I like it. You don't like, um, like M&M's in your popcorn? No. This one is a play on a pie. It's anacopita. Ooh. What's the proper way of eating this? Do we have to pick it up? Or? You can eat it right off of here. This is spinach, though, and I do not like spinach. Oh, you don't? Get a good bite, then. <laughs> I'll take a Frankie bite. Watch this. Let's see. Spinach and me do not get along. But I'm going to do it. Ready? Yeah, let's try it. Mm -mm. Not my favorite. <laughs> nope. But you know what? I'll give it a go again. Just for you guys. No. Nope. Not like that. Let's move that one out of the way. Maybe if it had some hot sauce to mask the taste. How about a strawberry rhubarb pie? Ooh. Oh, that's very sweet. That's cute. Wait, there's a heart. Just so they can see. Let's show them. Okay. Just dig in. Just dig in a little. Spinach and then rhubarb? Come on. <laughs> yeah, I need. These are a few of Jessica's not big things. <laughs> I'm going to clean my palate here. Nope. What is that? It's funky. <laughs> it's rhubarb. It's like it's like the cranberry bit with like a weird twist. Does it make your cheeks hurt? It's making the back of my tongue like tingle. This is a Greek cheese pie. Ooh, okay. Oh. Voila! Yeah, there you Whoa. go. Whoa. <laughs> it's, <not, laughs> it's falling apart. It's falling apart. It smells amazing. All right. So okay. let's give this a go. Cheers. Mm -hmm. That's good, but Frankie's gonna say it tastes funky. Funky? No, it just needs some hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> this is a specialty for Arizona. It's called Arizona Orange Pie. Ooh. Voila! Dig in. Well, let's take this you, You're supposed to eat that. Oh, you are? Yeah, I dare you to eat that. Eat this? Pie. Yes. It still has the rind. Nope. <laughs> you just ate the rind. <laughs> wow, that's sweet. That's a little too rich for me. Woo! That was a lot of sugar. Let me try it again. <laughs> it's too rich, so I'm gonna eat some more. I need some hot sauce. <laughs> a corn pie. Ooh. And there you are. What? Dig in. Corn pie. <laughs> Let's have a little bit of this, huh? Mm. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That doesn't count as a bite. You have to eat it. Fine. There's Take a no, bite. There's no no, Get him some hot sauce. <laughs> no, it's just not good. <laughs> twice. He spit it out twice. Yeah. I would right, like the record to show. Is a lemon blueberry sour cream pie. Woo! I gotta get some of the berries in there. That's a pretty pie. It's not bad. That's not good. <laughs> it does taste like sour cream. I really think after all these episodes, we've come to discover Frankie and I have the complete opposite taste. One more pie, here we go. I we'll see I, if you like it. I this think one. I know what it is. It is, oh. you don't know, oh, it's a good. pumpkin pecan pie. Oh. Voila! All right, here we go. Mm. Mm -hmm. And on a good note. That's good. That's really good. Cinnamon, pumpkin, what more could you ask for? It's perfect. What more could you ask for? <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving from all of us here at Cultural Cuisine. We hope that you had a great one as well. Come on, peace out. Dun, dun, dun. I do my pre-turkey pre -turkey workout. This is the Burrito Buster. This is the
burrito buster. Hello and welcome to the final I Can Do Better mini grant segment for this year. Throughout the past few months, we've shared several examples of people in our community who are living out the I Can Do Better movement. This movement is not designed to be lived out alone. As my shirt says, we plus I can do better. We want to spend this month's time inviting you to be part of this movement and giving you a tangible way that you can do that. During November, our church introduced a new initiative. It's called Operation Hope. How many people would agree with this statement? We can all use a little bit of hope nowadays. Well, we agree and Operation Hope is what we're gonna be calling all of our church outreach activities. It's our way to bring hope to our church, our way to bring hope to our community and beyond. You know, our current activity right now with Operation Hope is something each and every one of you can be involved with. And what it is, is throughout November, we have been collecting toys for foster youth throughout the state of Arizona. And our church has stepped up in a major way, brought so many toys, and we're just so excited about that. Also, our school has participated and brought toys, and um, we've just been uh, amazed at the response that we've seen so far. If you haven't had an opportunity to participate, you have one more final opportunity it's actually this coming Sunday. That'll be the last day that you can participate. Just bring a new unwrapped toy to Sequoia Pathfinder and just drop it in the box. And you can actually um, also ship toys directly to us if you don't feel comfortable bringing it in in person, as long as it's done before Saturday, December 5th. You can ship those toys to Focus Church, 4904 South Power Road, Suite 103 618 Mesa, Arizona 85212. Thanks. Come on, somebody. Love Dude Junior. So creative, and they do such a great job every single month. And I love Operation Hope. We believe in generosity, we believe in bringing hope. That is Operation Hope. And I love the fact that everybody who's part. A focus church can be part of that as well. The next couple of segments are coming from you from annual staff retreat that the staff of Focus Church went on. Crazy video, so much fun to just show you how much fun that we do have as, as a crew. Uh, but then also a special midweek moment from a good friend of mine, Pastor Nate Puccini. Yo, 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 what's going on? We're coming to you. From the Safra Tree, I got vanilla, B, and mocha. We're ready to get down with the snow challenge today. So B, why don't you tell the people what's gonna go down today? Come on. First, we got a polar plunge. Next, we have some snow angels. Then we've got some real snow, snow cones. And then a jump to warm up in the hot tub with some organic Milkmaid tea. Ooh, Ooh, Phil, are you, re are you ready for the milkmaid tea? Oh yeah, let's go. Man, I'm ready, man. I don't know what's in that, but I'm sure it's gonna bring us back to life after that plunge. <laughs> Come on now, let's go. Oh, my 
chocolates in there? Mm. Let's go. Okay. Got it, Mickey. Got it, Mickey. Let's go. Oh, burn up. Burn up. Some milk made tea. Top it off. Some milk made tea. Yeah, buddy. Challenge milk completed. Woo. <laughs> 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 oh. You can stop it. Welcome to the midweek moment, part of the midweek show. An opportunity for us to be able to truly be inspired. And today we get to be inspired by one of my great friends, close friends, Pastor Nate Puccini from Minneapolis, Minnesota and Come Substance on. Church. Let's go. So great to have you here. Such, a, such an honor to be here. I you. love Come it. On. Hey, so we're going to talk about what God is really speaking to us and uh, inspire some people yeah. with, with, with God's word. But before we get to that, I've got an important question for you. Bring it. Let's uh, do it. Okay, so I love the holiday season. Uh, we yep. just got done with Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving. So the good. most important thing about Thanksgiving is the food. That's right. People it's all say, about the food. People say it's family. Come on, we all know family's trouble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if it, if there's just this, the byproduct yeah, of just for right. us to be gluttons for a little bit. That's true. So the question that I have for you is about Thanksgiving food. Yep. What right. is your favorite Thanksgiving dessert? Ooh, that's, that's oh man, I love the desserts this is at good. Thanksgiving. It's all yeah. about the desserts. Yeah. It's like we got to get there. We got to get through the turkey. We got to get through all the stuff to get that. Just dessert, to get to but, the dessert. You know, honestly, I'm a traditionalist. I'm, I'm a pumpkin pie guy. My man, pumpkin pie is where My it's man at. Come on, is bro. where he is absolutely at. correct. If you have any other answer besides pumpkin pie, it's, yeah, you're wrong. Don't talk. You're just yeah. wrong. <laughs> love the pumpkin pie. Yeah. Love the whipped cream. Come on, all over Completely that. Completely yep. covered it. You that's know what right. changed my life? My wife makes homemade whipped cream. There's nothing like homemade whipped cream. I'm with you on that one. Babe, I love you so much. You <laughs> fill me so much love and so much food. You're just amazing. Yeah, love on. Thanksgiving. Yeah. We could talk about that all day long and just have fun with it. But I think it's so important for us to realize that, man, 2020 has been, obviously, we know. Yeah. Do we even need to talk about it? It's we know. We already know, right? Yeah, we know. It's been rough. But here's the truth of it is that, 2020 is not the only year. It's not the only season that's, that's right. been rough for us. Like we've all gone through hard seasons. So true. And God still continues to speak to us, right? That's right. He's still Amen. moving. Amen. He's still speaking to us, guiding us, leading us. And so the, the thing that I really want to ask you, and, and I think it's going to be an inspiration for Focus Church as well. Yeah. What has God been speaking to you? Man, you know, I look at a year like 2020 and, it, and, and the story after story of of, of, of anxiety and fear. I look what's happened this year with COVID and, and seeing just so many people struggle with depression, anxiety. People close to me uh, have, have taken their own lives. It's, it's, wow. it's, it's been a year of, uh, of, uh, of uncertainty. I think that's the, the word even the, the, uh, the world would assign to it, the enemy would assign to it. But, but I know this, we serve a certain God Come on. and he has plan and provision for every single person. And in the middle of, of, of this year, I've seen so many miracles take place. Wow. And uh, listen, everything will seem oppressive to us until we come into the presence of God and we submit ourselves into that. And I have seen people get healed this year. I've seen people get delivered from addiction. People walk from broken marriages into wholeness. And so, listen, the, 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 maybe the, the news says concentrate on, on the defeat of the year. Let's just, let's just assign it to, hey, that was a year of failure, but I actually believe God has birthed miracles in 2020 yes. into 2021. And I believe as we put our minds on, on the things above, the, the ideas of heaven, yeah. that, that God wants to do a miracle in your life. He wants to do a miracle uh, in our tomorrow, in our finances, Come in our on. physical body. Come on. And, and I believe God's doing that. I, I don't want to miss the move of God in the midst. And in fact, one of my, my favorite scriptures is found in the Old Testament. And it says this, look among the nations and watch. Be utterly astounded, for I am doing a work in your day that you would not believe 
even if it were told to you, it's found in Habakkuk. It's just a powerful scripture. And I believe that God's wanting us as believers to have vision for what he can do in our lives, even though the, the, the systems of man have, have assigned destruction. Yeah. And so I, I just, I'm excited. I, I have a, a ton of anticipation as we move into 2021, that it will be a year of breakthrough. It will be a year of growth. It yeah. will be a year of healing. And, uh, and I believe it's time for God's people to come together and believe yes. for those things. Yes, so. uh, 100%. Uh, you're, you're speaking the language of our church come right on, now, man. too. Vision, keeping your eyes fixed upon Jesus. It's the focus. Yeah. Even in the midst of distraction, keeping your focus upon, so good. upon Jesus. And man, you look around. I, I love that is such a powerful passage. Look at yep. the nations and the chaos. Yep. And then just be amazed. God is doing a work. Come he is doing a work. On. Amen. That is powerful. One thing um, that's been a, a big thing for our church is we've been on this journey of, of racial injustice yeah. and racial inequality. And, and we believe in unity in diversity. Yes. And we want to be able to, to preach the gospel because it preaches unity. That's right. And that's something that you and Substance Church have been intimately involved with yeah. because Minneapolis, Minnesota, yeah. George Floyd, your church, one of your campuses is located just a block away from where George it, Floyd yeah, was Yeah, just murdered. right right next to the neighborhood where everything began to go down and, and created not just a nationwide conversation, but but a worldwide movement towards, like, hey, how are we living? How are yeah. we interacting with those who are close to us? And and what's interesting is in that neighborhood, there's uh, over 150 different languages spoken just wow. a block south of our, our our downtown Minneapolis campus. And and what it did for us is uh, at, at first, uh, to be honest, we 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 went from a Mount Arbery, uh, making national headlines, yes. and we moved into George Floyd. Yes. Uh, Listen, when, when things are out of sight, they're out of mind. And, 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 and I believe what, what happened in that, that period of time is it, there was no out of sight, out of mind. It was front and center. Right I, yes. I, I was down at that, that campus and we're, we're in the parking lot praying. And, yeah. uh, but God called us beyond prayer. He called us into action to Ooh, pray, but, let's then, go. but then also to serve. And, and, and the, the word the Lord gave us is like, do you actually love this city? Because I love this city. And, uh, and, and so we, we just began to say, hey, we may not have the right answers to maybe how a person feels. I, I don't have the right answers to people's hate response. I don't have the answer to uh, the person who just lost their home because their building was burned down, but I do know the one who has the answer. Come on. And, and I know we, we'll take the little bit that we have and we, we're just gonna move to action in love in prayer, yes. to hear people's stories yes. and then serve them. Yes. And if we took that posture of ser uh, of servanthood to to really just to be Christ uh, in action, not just Christ in thought, not just Christ in our auditoriums where it feels comfortable. Let's go. And so we we actually we own a, a multi million dollar property downtown, yeah. but yeah. our parking lot became our church. Yeah. It became the place that we began to minister to that community, reach out to that community, show love uh, to that community, and, and people respond to love. People respond to kindness. They respond to goodness. But people respond to hate with hate. And, mm. uh, and God's given us a different mindset, and He's given us a different tactic to, to show this world who He is. And it's, it is through serve others, seek to understand, pray for them, show up and be in their world. And so we've, we've just decided as a church, uh, we're not going to let the George Floyd situation pass us by when it feels good again. We're going to live in the pain of it yes. and we're going to stay there and uh, so we made a commitment we are not parachuting in just to drop off some food and leave we are going to live in the community and be planted in the community and see what god does when the church shows up i love it and uh man we're, we're taking those streets for jesus we've given I away 4.5 million pounds of food as a response come to george on. floyd come on thousands of people have been fed as a response to what happened with george floyd through a group of just a small group of people saying hey i just want to i just want to be present love people and, and show this world something different and i believe through that god's kingdom is truly coming and, we, so and, and what I know about Minneapolis and I know about your city, they will be Jesus cities. They yes. will be Jesus, uh, cities not marked by, that. by something that happened that was tragic, not by maybe um, a, a situation of defeat, maybe not a, a, a political stance. They will be defined Ooh. by a kingdom stance. Yes. And, uh, and, and that, that's, we as Christians, we, 
we're royal priesthood. We're set apart. We're peculiar people. Yeah, a little we bit, know we're peculiar bit. people. But in that, our job is to simply to, to just pray that prayer. Lord, would your kingdom come? Would your will, will be, be done? done? And we don't have to wait for his kingdom to come. Guess what? Because his kingdom is forcefully advancing. Oh, and come let's on. Go. And so uh, we've, we've seen just um, what I've seen is people that have not ever served people that have never actively have been involved in church show up and then daily serve people that they've never been in interaction with in their life and it's changing their hearts. Because I think a lot of times we go to see other people's hearts changed, but truthfully, God needs to change our hearts. Oh, and, and that's what I've been seeing, yes. uh, just softening us for uh, our city. And uh, uh, listen, what the enemy meant for evil with George Floyd, God has turned it for his good. In and, Minneapolis. In Minneapolis, and I believe oh. it for Arizona, and I believe it for our country. We, we are going to see a great reformation of, 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 of the church through Come on. tragedy in this world. And Come on. so... Um, but honestly, it's, 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 it's hard though. This has, this has, we're not, I'm not gonna lie. It's not that it's not been a hard year, yeah. um, but it's been a year of hope for us. And I, I want it I to be a, hope, a year of hope for you. I love that. I want it to be a year of hope for, uh, for someone out there that's maybe just feeling anxiety right now. They're fearful of what the future may hold. Um, I, I just know the one who holds the future and he has a plan for your life. That's beyond that, that fear and anxiety. I love that. We, we have questions about what, what our country's going to look like. We have questions. Yeah about what the political change that needs to happen because we, we realize that there's, there needs to be change. Yes. Nobody has the answer. Yep. Like, I think that that's something that we have to come to a realization with. Like, we need to see reform. We need to be able to see these policy changes. Boom, 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 boom. Nobody has the answer. Right. And we're expecting man to come up with the answer. Yeah. Come on, we know where the answer truly that's lies. Right. The answer's in Jesus. That's right. And that's so right. what our job is as Christians, as followers of Christ, is to just simply point people towards Jesus. That's exactly it. And I actually think 90% of it is just showing up and being available. Uh, many times we, we spend so much time thinking, and I don't know about you, uh, my mind can be the worst for me. So yeah. much time thinking, and but just show up, be present, be around other people, and watch what God does when we submit our ideas, our plans, our thought life to Him. And, and you can look at social media and you can see everyone's thought life. And, and I just have a love scripture says, take every thought captive and make it obedient, obedient to, to Christ. Christ. And as you do that, I believe that there's many out there right now, they need joy in their life. They need peace in their life and they just feel up against it. God has supernatural joy for you when you just submit to him and show up and be available. Show up, be available. I'll tell you what, church, if there's one word that you can take into next year it's a phrase i think is so important for us you need to show up so that yeah. god can show off thank That's you good. so Come much on, pastor nate we love you guys so much we'll see you again next month and peace out such a great word love pastor nate so much that is this month's midweek show we hope you were entertained we hope you were encouraged we hope you were inspired and we hope to see you again next month peace out